So let's start off by talking about the general nephron structure. The nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. All the blood that's going through the kidneys is going to be filtered through a nephron, and it's the nephron that actually does all the processing of all the things that actually happen at the kidney. So all the nephrons actually dump their filtrate, which at the end is urine, into the renal pelvis, which then goes into the ureters and then the bladder and the urethra and so on and so forth. So that's how that kind of relates to the gross anatomy of the kidney. The nephrons are really, really tiny and each kidney has around a million nephrons. So before we dive into the different parts of the nephron, all of which you are expected to know for the MCAT, it's important to kind of take a look at the big picture so you can have a general idea of where these nephrons are located and how they relate to the you know entire kidney itself. So one key thing about the nephrons is that part of them are located in the renal cortex and then another part dips into the medulla. We see this here so here's our familiar image of the kidney here we're looking at the cortex is going to be this outer part and then the renal medulla is in. So the nephron is this entire structure here. So all of this in yellow is actually the nephron and notice how part of it is located here in the cortex and then there's another part that dips into the medulla. So that is, oh here we have cortex and medulla already uh, depicted here. So notice how it, it kind of goes through those two parts and you're going to see why that's important as we talk about the different parts of the nephron and their functions. Okay, so let's think about the circulation, so blood that's actually going into the kidneys as well. So we know that there's these big arteries that go into the kidneys and they'll start branching off and becoming smaller and smaller at, to the point where we call them arterioles. So there's an afferent arteriole that goes into the nephron and that is seen right here. So we have an afferent arteriole that goes into the glomerulus, which is this portion of the nephron right here, this part that kind of looks like a ball or kind of like an onion actually, we see it better here. This is called the glomerulus and we have a capillary that takes off from this afferent arteriole that will go into the glomerulus and that's how blood actually gets filtered. It is in the glomerulus that the liquid, the fluids that are present in the blood that's flowing through those capillaries actually get filtered into the nephrons and then it gets processed. So we have that blood from an afferent arteriole is filtered into the glomerulus and then when that arteriole actually well, will become a capillary and it'll come out of the glomerulus, we call that an efferent arteriole. So afferent going to the glomerulus and efferent coming out of the glomerulus. And this is what we see here. So again, we have this afferent arteriole branches into a capillary and then when it comes out, we will call that an efferent arteriole. So just keep those in mind. We're going to reference them as we go through these lessons. So just having a general understanding of this anatomy is also important. A few key terms that you should definitely know as we go through these lessons are, first one is called a filtrate. So when we say filtrate, we mean fluid that is found in the tubules, a pre-urine. So whatever gets filtered from the blood, that's going to be plasma ions, electrolytes, glucose, etc. All of that that gets filtered out into the glomerulus, into the tubules of the nephrons is what we call a filtrate. Future, in the future, that's going to become urine. So you can think of this as the pre-urine. And then the second thing is the word secretion. So we're going to talk about that a lot and when things go from the interstitium to the filtrate we call that secretion because we're taking things from the body and putting them into the filtrate. And the opposite of that is reabsorption. This is when substances go from the filtrate, this pre-urine, and they go to the interstitium which will eventually mean that they end up in the bloodstream or maybe they stay in the interstitium but things they're taking out of the filtrate because we need them for something else or they're going to be used in a different setting, we call that reabsorption. So, and the substances that we're talking about here are, as I said, electrolytes like ions and glucose, urea, and water, for example. 
Now let's go through the parts of the nephron. This is super important for the MCAT, so I just want to give you a broad overview of what the sequence is, and then as you go through the individual parts, uh, make sure that you have down the order that these sections actually come in. So everything starts at the glomerulus. So the glomerulus is like I said, this onion looking part of it where there's a capillary that's all convoluted, it goes through it and that's how um, fluid and things that are filtrated actually go from the capillaries into the nephron. So it, everything starts with the glomerulus, this is our number one here, and then from the glomerulus things go into the proximal convoluted tubule or the PCT. And when I say things, I mean the filtrate. So we go into the PCT, which is this part right here. It's kind of hard to see because there's a lot going on, but it's essentially a tube that's very convoluted, which is why we call it the proximal convoluted tubule. From the PCT, the filtrate goes into the loop of Henle. The loop of Henle, this is this entire area here. It has a descending part and an ascending part, and we have that here. And it also has a really important uh, function that we'll talk about. And then next we have the filtrate will go to the distal convoluted tubules. So from the loop of Henle, it'll go up and it goes into this region called the distal convoluted tubule or the DCT. Again, a tubule that's very convoluted, but it's further away from the glomerulus, so we call it a distal convoluted tubule. And then finally, the last part is when the filtrate goes into the collecting duct, which is number five here on this list. We see the collecting duct right here. And just for completion, I'll circle it up here as well. So one trick for you to start memorizing the order of these sections of the nephron is as follows. So always keep in mind that the word proximal is used to mean something that is closer to a reference point. So in this case, the reference point would be the glomerulus. So something that is proximal to the glomerulus means that something that is closer to the glomerulus than something that is distal to the glomerulus. So in contrast, we have the distal convoluted tubule, which is further away from the glomerulus, and so we can make that distinction. So this will help you uh, remember that the proximal convoluted tubule is more proximal, it's closer to this reference point of the glomerulus than the distal convoluted tubule, which is further down on the nephron. So now you won't, at least those two, you won't get them um, in the incorrect order if you keep in mind that our reference point here is where the blood is being filtrated. So that's it for this lesson on the general structure of the nephron.